time is money. This applies to many aspects of life. But when it comes to the production kitchen, you really feel the difference when you are able to do larger quantities in less time. In today's video, I wanted to compare two slightly different ways of laminating croissant dough with two kilograms of butter. Context matters a lot. What I mean is what equipment you have, like in the fridges, freezers or blast chillers. However, the most important thing in order to laminate a large sheet of croissant dough is relatively big lamination machine. In the first example, we take the chilled croissant dough together with flattened butter, which was done yesterday, and start passing it through the lamination machine. The dough is being passed two times the size of the butter. Once the required level of dough thickness is reached, the butter plug is placed in the middle and the sides of the dough are cut and put on the top of the butter. We need to make sure that those ends meet and seal very well together, kind of like gluing them so it doesn't open and doesn't get wonky in the process. Some places start with a double fold or book fold. However, the first fold here is a single fold. Here, the sides are cut enough to see the perfect layers. It might look like quite a lot of trimmings, but all these scraps get a second life. And in the end of the day, they turn into another pastry creation. I know this is another topic, but I admire places when they manage to go to zero waste. And maybe we could talk in another video about how to use up all the pastry scraps. However, let's go back to the folds. A double fold is being made immediately, keeping the same principle in mind, either we cut a straight line or adjust a little bit in order to trim a bit less. Well, the most important rule is to join the layer, so the butter and dough layers meet. We will give another few passes, just to flatten the dough a little bit, as after the fold we need to rest the dough. Here we have a few options. You can either put the whole dough in the freezer and keep for some time. You can also put it in the freezer and then move it to the fridge and then continue or just chill in the blast chiller. Once the dough has rested, we continue with the dough, giving a final pass to the lamination machine and cutting croissants. Let's move to the production kitchen, where roughly the same amount of dough and 2 kg of butter are being laminated every day. We will see some differences, starting with butter. Butter has not been flattened a day before, so the morning routine starts with passing the butter two at the same time. Frankly speaking, it's not taking much time, so once the butter is done, we start laminating the dough. The dough had a long resting time and it has not been flattened as in the previous method. However, after a few passes, we start locking in the butter. Here we build double layers, so it goes dough, butter, dough, butter and dough on top. It is important that the butter is pliable, otherwise it would break inside and the layers would be ruined. Also, we make sure all the sandwich layers stick well with each other. So here we go, we pass it through the sheeter and we do the first fold, double or book fold. We trim the ends where you don't see any butter, but really not too much, and we save these scraps. As you can see, we cut uneven sides in order to join two ends. Those of course have nice layers so we put them in the middle in one straight line and close. We leave the dough to rest in the freezer for around 15-20 minutes before doing a single fold. Here we only cut uneven sides, cut another side completely straight and place in the middle. Then close nicely as you can without any empty gaps. And that is it, we are ready to chill before the final cutting. I think it's always valuable to learn from others, compare and understand how things work elsewhere. Thank you for watching and see you next week.